of see my father's eyebrows raised because you know I had to treat the spine with care, the pages with care. Okay, okay. Uh, what, when, what was the first? Uh, do you remember the first germ of um, idea of homeboy? Do you, do you remember the point when you um, got the exact idea that you started with? Um, I uh, don't because I think I was a few drinks into the evening. I was, I might have been sitting at uh, this fabulous um, place called CBGB's in uh, downtown Manhattan in the mm -hmm. Bowery, uh, which was the birth of uh, punk rock. Uh, the birth of punk rock took place at mm -hmm. uh, CBGB's. Um, and I might have scrawled a few lines of Homeboy on a cocktail napkin. Um, and later, when I retrieved the co cocktail napkin, um, a, f you know, a month later, I tra what I transcribed needed a more rigorous uh, uh, attention. And so uh, Homeboy might have been born one night in the Bowery. Where Punk Rock was born? Where punk rock was born, um, uh, I think the Ramones came out of CBGBs mm -hmm. in 1974. I was yes. born in 1974. Really? Mm. Wow. You say you've been writing from a very young age. Um, did you ever try to write a novel before? Um, I believe in class four, uh, I uh, self-published a novel. Um, I put together. Uh, loose sheaves of paper, uh, stapled them in the middle three times, and uh, wrote uh, not a novel but a collection of short stories, uh, vaguely inspired from uh, Gulliver's Travels. That's very impressive. <laughs> did, did someone from your family preserve that? I it's, it's strangely you you are I mean it's, you, nobody else has brought this up but. Strangely, this manuscript surfaced um, maybe three, four months ago. Uh, my uh, parents uh, came across it in a carton uh, for some reason in you know 2010 and uh, and uh, and uh, delivered it to me. And you read it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, I think if we go back to any of our older stuff, it makes us cringe. I think Homeboy might have made me cringe in a few years, but uh, <coughs> I think it was, a, it was a valiant effort. Tell me something, you've grown up all over the place. You've, you, you, you started in the U.S., I believe, even as a child, you were, you were traveling. Two years, yes. As and then you studied abroad, then you came back to Karachi, you know. So all of that. Um, for a person like you, what does what does home mean? What what does home mean to you? Uh, I uh, am a card carrying Pakistani. Um, I feel at home in Karachi um, because I can eat Nihari every night. Uh, I can listen to Kavali. I like the smell of salt uh, in the breeze in the evening. <coughs> um, so there are things, these, these things define home in my head. And yet I'm also an... So you're saying the cultural familiarity, the, the things you're used to while growing up... Sure. ...define home for you. Um, and, and at the same time, I'm, I'm an urban creature, so I feel at home in cities. I've, I felt at home in Delhi for the first time uh, in, you know, 2005. Or, and I feel home in uh, feel at home in, um, in in you know New York or, or Washington D.C. Um, I don't feel at home in uh, you know um, I didn't quite feel at home in Iowa, which is in the hinterland mm -hmm. of the United mm -hmm. States of America, and I wouldn't feel at home in Quetta or in rural Balochistan. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, they, I, I I need a city to sustain sustain me, I need the infrastructure city hmm. um, uh, offers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about journalism. That's something else that you do and you write wonderfully different pieces. What is it that you enjoy about the process the most? The whole 
thing of being a journalist, the whole life of being a journalist in, in the time that you are writing the, uh, and, and what kind of stories do you want to tell? I mean, there's certain kind of stories you've been telling, but what other kind of stories would you like to tell? Since the publication of Homeboy, I've been asked by you know various publications to write about Karachi and uh, or to write about Pakistan. And I've in turn replied that I don't know Pakistan. Uh, I don't think anybody can know Pakistan. It's a nation of 170 million people, the sixth largest country in the world. Um, I. I do know something about Karachi because I live in Karachi and I I can I, you know if I do my work I can I can talk intelligently about it so although I'm very familiar with Karachi and my you know my entire clan resides from one end to the other um, when I'm asked to make sense of Karachi in discourse then I have to I have to do work um, uh, un, you know, I, I feel uncomfortable, uh, like others, uh, unlike others, who can hold forth uh, with great authority on a country as big as India. I mean, mm. you know, when you when you start saying India is, you're already incorrect. Mm. In, in, you know, in, India is mm. is a is a construction that is mm. not mm. accurate. So. Um, I have been, um, you know, I have, and I also uh, told these organizations that I will write about things that nobody has ever written before, because Pakistan figures in the headlines uh, every day, but there are parts of Pakistan, this vast country, that escape discourse routinely. So I went to uh, a Nani Mandir, which is in Balochistan, in the hills of Balochistan, it's one of the holiest Hindu sites in the world because mm. Kali is said to have fallen from the sky and shattered mm. on the hills of Balochistan. Mm. And uh, although there has been spot, there has it ha there has been some spotty coverage about it, mm. um, I, I felt that this is something that needs to be brought to the fore. Mm. Um, I also wrote about um, a co-ed girls school in a conservative not only Pathan but a Waziri neighborhood Waziristan mm -hmm. Waziristan is a is a, a very unsettled mm -hmm. part of the country because it borders Afghanistan mm -hmm. and uh, I, I visited a, a, a this, this school in a Waziri neighborhood where uh, you know it's, it's it's difficult for an outsider mm -hmm. to go inside this was not in Waziristan this was on the periphery of Karachi mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I was surprised to walk into a school in somebody's house and that women let, allowed me in and they weren't covering their faces mm -hmm. and uh, they, the students were uh, got up and recited their readers in English and Urdu and, and took drawing classes and so, you know, uh, most of Karachi, you know, most of Karachi is a very, it's, it's a very cosmopolitan place, it's mm -hmm. uh, the the urban middle class of Karachi is perhaps the most fiercely secular in the Muslim world, mm. but there are parts of Karachi where uh, things are different. So, you know, these are things that escape discourse routinely. Mm. I also wrote about the art market in, 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 mm. in Karachi, mm. and I wrote about how women, single women, dominate uh, dominate the art market. Um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your reading habits. Um, I'm... I don't write, I don't read much when I write. Uh, it usually interferes with my writing unless it pertains directly in some way, unless I need to be reading, for instance, Plato or, or Aristotle. Um, um, you mean as research for the as, book? As or? a sort of research, as if, if, I, if I am contending with a philosophical concept, I will do some work uh, in refreshing mm. what I know and, and discovering what I don't know. Um, and I also uh, am a very impatient reader. I can put a, <coughs> I can put, uh, a book down uh, as if it's my job. I, I, you know, I can tell you 
how much I've read of a certain book and some, you know, there's some books that I can read only nine pages, there's some that I have read 26 pages of and there's some that make it to 75. There are few books that hold my attention till the end. Um, and I also tend to reread books. So I have read Graham Greene's Heart of the Matter for some reason for uh, I've, I've read it about maybe eight nine times and that's just heart of the matter um, are you a curious reader would you pick up anything that looks or sounds interesting a greedy curious reader or are you very focused and you can you you can say you know what i'm not going to waste my time reading this this sounds really interesting and i'm this is what i'm going to read uh, i um, I, 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 if I understand what you're asking, I, I mean, I, I, okay, I, I'll explain I, this better. I, I walk up. into I walk into bookstores and I go to buy a particular book, but I have, there's a book that that uh, you know uh, the the covers of books can sell themselves to me very easily. I've never heard of the book. I know it's probably going to be a bad book, but it's just I have to know what's in it because those two lines make me really curious about you know yes. what's what's in it. I uh, can walk into a bookstore and. I can purchase 10, 15 books uh, and, it, and 10, 15 books would take me about three or four hours uh, but I can spend a lot of time in a bookstore and I, I will, you know, I will, I can from smelling the pages to flipping it around and opening it to a page, you know, it, it takes some time and there are many books that I'll put down. So in that way, yes, I, you know, we're, we're alike that way but uh, once I have the book, uh, then you know it it takes it it takes a special book for me to complete complete sure, it sure, sure. And, and 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 a more special book that will invite me to read it again. There are also books that I have you know read many times as a teenager that I have never returned to. I've read Lolita several times. I've read uh, Ulysses uh, twice, um, but. I haven't returned to them and may not return to them. And are you? Are, are you? Is your library as sacred as your as your father's was to him? Or do you give away books and throw them? Away? I don't give away books. I, I'm very wary about other um, of, of allowing uh, allowing people to borrow books. Um, I also uh, treat my books in the way I think my father uh, would. Would, would like. <laughs> okay, thank you. That'll be all. Thank you.